Hello and good afternoon. I'm Kelly from CompTIA and today we're talking about the five unexpected benefits of online testing. Before we get into it, let me introduce our guests. Randy, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure would. Hi, Kelly. Um, I'm Randy Gross. I'm the Chief Information Officer for CompTIA and also Executive Vice President for our certification operations. Thanks for making the time today to join us. Sure. Now, before we get into the content of this broadcast, a few things that I want to point out. There are some links in the description box to help you navigate the things that we're talking about. Also, if you want to comment with where you're tuning in from, we love to see all the far-flung places that our broadcast reach. And new and improved for this broadcast, we can actually see your comments while we're live. So if you have questions about online testing, the process, et cetera, drop them in that comment box and we can address them at the end of this broadcast. So are you ready, Randy? Let's go. All right. So the first benefit that I want to talk to you about is this idea that, you know, test taking can be stressful. How does the online testing versus the in-person, how do those all work together and how might they help mitigate some of the concerns that people feel as they approach a test? Yeah, there's a lot of different th threads we can go down, go down on this. I'll, I'll, I'll take a couple. So the first thing is, is as you're taking a test today, it's the exact same system at, in person as it is at your home. So you're, you have a completely equivalent experience. So you're not doing anything different than either side would be doing. I think in terms of the, the test itself, being in an environment that you're comfortable with is really important. Most people are comfortable in their homes. Um, and so it's a great place to, it's a great way to be able to take a test where you feel you can, you can be successful. Same thing. Some people do feel comfortable taking them at, uh, at testing centers as well. It's, it's, very straightforward and hundreds of thousands and millions of people do that a year. So I think with online testing specifically, there there should be a lot of confidence that this is a mature process that's been around actually for many, many years. Um, CompTIA is involved in it now and it's something that we're confident uh, candidates will be successful as they take a part of. So I, I think there's nothing nothing to worry about and, and something that you can test everything ahead of time and make sure it all works and then just get going. And it's like taking any other exam you would have taken in a test center. It's awesome that some of our veteran test takers already know what to expect because it's the same as some of the other exams that they may have taken in the past. Yep. Yeah, for sure. It's 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 just like walking in. You, it will look literally identical when you start taking the test. It's very easy. Awesome. So the next thing that I want to talk about now that this is a consistent, this will be an ongoing offering from CompTIA, let's talk a little bit about some of the people who may live far from an existing testing center. Um, how is this benefiting them? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll take a step back to reiterate what you just said. This is a permanent offering for CompTIA going forward. So this is something that people can expect to have uh, as available to them well past uh, the coronavirus issues or anything else. It's, it's definitely a, a game changer for, for the industry, and we're really excited to, to be a part of it. In terms of the travel time, um, yeah, it, it, I've been with CompTIA now for a, a dozen years or so. And one of the things that's been hardest is when you hear a candidate that lives in a remote location, especially that could be, I, I've heard as far as eight hours away from a testing center. And that's, Ooh. that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a commitment. It is. And it's, it's inspiring in one, in one sense that people are willing, that the people are willing to travel because of the, the opportunity to better their lives. It's great. Um, but clearly that's not a, it's not ideal. And so we've had, it's been interesting watching this um, occur over the last couple of months that there've been some areas of, of the world where, you know, let's say online testing can represent nearly 100% of all of an entire country because people want, it, it makes it easier on their, on themselves. So there's, there's countries with large, you know, like land masses, for lack of a better way of saying it, that we've also seen the same thing happening to. So I think it does save a lot of time. It certainly saves, you know, in that eight hour example, I mean, that's, that's obviously extreme, but it, it's there. If you think in terms of just even of preparation with leaving your house um, and all that, it's very, to me, I see it as equivalent to online to working online. So I work from home, uh, just like a lot of folks do. They're probably listening to this call. Um, it's the same idea. If you think about getting ready, going there, getting out of your car, doing all that stuff like that, that kind of stuff is gone. So it is, it is very efficient to do so. Now we talked a little bit about the ability to skip all of the, you know, parking shenanigans, all of that. Let's talk about another aspect of online testing that's opened up a whole new world for people who maybe work shift work or have kids at home. When can people take tests? 
Yeah, that is a really, really interesting, and I'll use your word from the from the demo, unexpected benefit of this. So, I think you know the vast majority of testing centers are attached to existing businesses or working you know hours that are generally um, in line with the nine to five, and certainly some expand past that, and weekends sometimes are are an option on and on, but. With online testing, it is truly a 24-7 activity, meaning you still have to go find an appointment that works for you, but sometimes the appointments are available same day. It might not be the time you want, but if you were to go look out a week, uh, a week in advance, you will very likely be able to find a time, a day of the week that you can take the test. If you feel like taking that test at 2 o'clock in the morning your time, feel free. Um, you can do that. So it does, it does open that up. Um, what we've seen in terms of unexpected, people do like taking tests a lot on the weekends, which, you know, obviously is, um, is great. And, and so you do have to book those a little bit ahead of time. That was the one thing I would say is make sure you go look at it and find it because they're, it's very, very popular. Um, but during the week, especially if you were to go look right now and, and anyone can do this, if you set up a Pearson view account, um, you can go, you can select a test that you, you potentially want to take. You don't have to pay anything, but you can go look and see all the uh, all the different slots there. There's lots. So at any given point, you'll have plenty of options to take it when a time that fits you, which is which has been great. We've gotten some really cool feedback on that as well. Absolutely. And I suppose if 2 a.m. is your golden hour, <laughs> have at it. I'll be yeah. in that. I guess we could test like how effective people are at different times of the day. That'd be interesting, but mm, no, we, we have other things to worry about at the moment. <laughs> right. Well, that does sort of feed into the next point of in this environment, there's a lot of things that you can control that you didn't necessarily before. So let's get into this idea of, you know, you can schedule that exam not only when you feel best, but you can also control your environment at home. Yeah, and I think there's there's a couple threads to that too. So the first is think in terms of basic environment, physical environment mainly. So you want your room warmer, colder, fan, things like that, that or, or something that's not making noise, but that, that's able to put it in a way that you're comfortable taking. I think there's there's a lot to that, that that's been that can be helpful for for some people. Um, you know, there's some people that get a bit of anxiety um, in terms of just being in a new environment. So having you know, those comfortable things around you are important. However, um, in terms of the environment, those are the things you control. The things that are going to have to stay the same is you're going to have to have your your desk clear. You can't have your phone with you. You need to make sure that um, the environment around you doesn't have people coming in and out, that you're not talking with anyone, you're not getting up and leaving. Um, things along those lines, you have to really behave in a way that that ensures, you know, the test is fair and equivalent with what you would do at a test center. That's, um, and to be honest, the problems that we've seen, um, by and large, are people honestly forgetting they're, they're taking a test and that they're at their house. So they'll get up and just leave. Like, well, you, you kind of have to finish. And so, so what some people do even too, and this has been a problem, is they'll take a picture of the end of their test. Well, I don't want you taking pictures of my of, of the exam. That's part of the rules at test centers. It's part of the rules there too. So you have to be aware that you do control your environment. And you're in your home environment. However, you need to still behave in the in the right way so that we're making sure that you're not you know gaining an unfair advantage over anyone else. So you can wear your pajamas, but you probably can't have a background as messy as mine. Well, I mean, yours, yours does look very, very well put together. Um, the, the, what, what will happen is you'll take pictures of your environment. The greeters and the proctors will will take a look at those ahead of time to make sure there's nothing there. And then they'll work with you on your environment to make sure that you're not you're, you're not taking any, uh, I don't know, anything that we, like I said, giving you advantage. I think what's what's been most difficult is people understanding, like, they really do need to have a quiet room. You know, some of our exams are, you know, two, two and a half hours you need that room to be quiet and you cannot have anyone come in it. Um, but aside from that, yeah, wear your pajamas. You do need to wear clothes. Um, I think that is, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good idea. Um, but, you, but, but again, like you're on camera the whole time too. Um, and and mm -hmm. you're recorded while you're doing that. We're very upfront about doing that, but that's, that's largely how we keep one of the ways we keep the exam safe. But yeah. Yeah. If you want to, you know, wear your fluffy socks and have your favorite pillow and all that, I don't care. Um, but, but yeah, just it, 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 there's a balance to be had there, but I think online gives you a lot more options than uh, most people might realize. And you did glaze over a point that we got a question on. These are remote proctored exam. Someone's 
someone is going to be watching you take that exam the entire time and it will be captured in case there are any inconsistencies that need to be reviewed. Yeah, exactly. And you know, there's a couple things, but I think you know, one thing that folks need to be aware of is as, as you go into an online test, um, you do the registration, you send all the information that we that's requested. And I will say just one quick thing, do the system test prior to even signing up for the exam, please. And Head to that it. website. You can get it there. Exactly. Do that site. If, if you do that test and do it a couple of times, do it with the same computer that you have, um, then you'll be in good shape. That said, once you start going through this process, you'll see it where we say you've checked in, you're waiting for a proctor, you're being recorded from the second you do that until the very end of your test when you hit submit on the, on the post-exam survey. So make no mistake, anything that happens in those period is fair, in, in that period is fair game. I'm not trying to be scary. I'm trying to give you give you ample understanding of how this works. Um, because if you haven't taken an online exam, you have to understand like everyone thinks there's this security problem. One of the one of the obvious ways we do things is recording everything. We and I've you know we've gone back and looked at exams, and what's been very interesting is people have um, said, "Well, I wasn't doing that." Well, yeah, you were. And the flip side around, yeah. yeah. So there's a proctor watching you that notes that, um, and they're there the whole time. And and so I think that's been something that. It's not, it's not as invasive as it seems, but it is something to be aware of. And this is consistent with what happens in an in-center in test as well. Yeah, exactly. You are being monitored, you are being recorded, your likeness is being captured to ensure the consistency of the exam. Yep, exactly. So getting back on track with what we've been talking, there's one more unexpected benefit that you talked about a little bit when we were talking about scheduling. Same day appointments are available. So let's talk about that timeline. What does it look like to decide I want to get certified to I am certified? I mean, the fastest way you could get certified is you can go, like you said, like I just said, with going on and looking at the appointments, you can go in, assuming you've purchased your voucher from the store um, and you're trained and ready to go. Um, and in voucher plus, you know, we have a tremendous amount of content as well. As you prepare for that, you go on, you register, and you can see when those are available get it going. And then after that, you will see your score. And so you, you can take the test as quickly um, as it's available. At the end of that, you will see your score. And within 24 hours, your score report will be available that you can check out online. Um, you can also printing at the end of these is I think we're getting it's getting better, but I would suggest just checking it online. But yeah, you can have all that stuff done from from starting registration if there's an appointment within two and a half, three hours done. So I would highly encourage you to go um, register ahead of time, but there's a chance that you could pull it off that way too. And if you do want to get started right now, there's a link in the description box to go to the store, get your voucher. If you have more questions, there's a, also a link in there that goes to a blog post that talks about any question that you may have about online testing. But if you're game for it, Randy, we do have some questions now that you could tackle if you're interested. Yes, I'm interested. It's Friday, I'm feeling good. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So Dwight Davenport is the first question. And he asked for online test taking. Will I have access to a whiteboard and calculator if I need it? Yeah. So that's a that, that's a really good question. There's a little bit of a difference with the way the whiteboard works. So in the testing center, you're given a physical whiteboard with a pen and you can erase all that. The way that the system works with um, online is it's digital. The different the, the nice part about that is you can type into it. So I, I would argue that you can probably do things as fast, if not faster, um, in, in terms of getting the information in there. So there's that and the calculator is available as well. So yeah, it's there. It's just a little, little bit different, but it, it's equivalent from every way we've looked at it. Awesome. So Teresa W has a very specific question about how to transfer from the booked exam that she had in a testing center to online testing. So do you want to address a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. And, and Teresa, I would encourage you on the help site. So if you go to help.comptia.org, I believe if you type in reschedule exam, it should come up with online, but just the high level, the way that has to work, unfortunately, you have to cancel that appointment that's at the test center and then go and rebook for an online test. So unfortunately, we can't just simply reschedule it. It's got to be a cancellation. Um, the cancellation is a little bit difficult. If you pay via credit card, um, that will get returned and typically like most, most merchants is three to five days. If you used a voucher, I believe that voucher is immediately available for you to read, to reuse it. So the credit card is when you're, um, when you go through the site to register for an exam, you can't just purchase directly. Um, but if you, if you did use a voucher, you can do it that way. So um, 
if you wanted to pay the funds the second time, they will be refunded for the first one. But not, it's not ideal, but um, that's the way it's had. It's, it's been working since we started. And Teresa, I will reply with a link that Randy mentioned uh, when this broadcast is over with so that you can follow all those instructions. It is something that we've been addressing on a global scale. So at least you're in good company. Yeah. Uh, we've got another question from Bill about how clean does your environment need to be? Yeah, so I, I would say use your use common sense on it. So your desk you're not going to have papers on it. You're not going to have um, your phone. You're going to get get rid of things like watch, like so you can't have your watch on, for example. All of the same stuff. If you've ever taken an exam in a testing center, it's the same idea in terms of what's on you physically. Um, we'll take a look at your glasses and and, and things along those lines. Um, with what's behind you, a lot of it depends on how far away it is, what we can see, and then when you do the pictures in front of you, same idea is there's there should be nothing on the walls that you're looking at that would be even close to giving us the idea that you're you know, trying to get information on there. Um, your computer, the, the real important part here too is not only, so your physical environment, um, There's if you go on the Pearson site, I, I can't remember the URL at the moment, but there's a way that you can see kind of like what their expectations are of us up there. So I'd encourage you to look at that. The one thing that I would encourage everyone as you're, as you're listening to this is your computer is gonna, work. what happens is there's gonna be a secure browser that's installed on your computer. Um, shut everything down before you do that because it, it it's unpleasant if there's something r running. So I would suggest like your the, the software expects that everything's turned off. Just do that ahead of time. Don't try VPNs or, or VMs or anything along those lines because they do get flagged pretty quickly. And even even little things you don't realize that are running in the background. Um, I you know all of us have that kind of stuff. I think that's that's the stuff. Just make sure you're very deliberate about shutting it down. So if you do all that and there is something funky in your environment, we move. That's one less thing you have to worry about. There may be something you that the that the proctors fix. Um, finds that they don't want you to have, but at least on the computer side, please control that too. I forgot to mention that earlier. Awesome. Uh, maybe two more and we'll call it a day, night, wherever you may be tuning in from. Uh, Ellis Halston asks, how do you go to schedule these exams? Yeah. So the quickest, we can, Kelly can put this link in too, but the quickest way I think is home.pearson.com slash CompTIA. It's basically just registering for a normal exam. So if you if you were to just search Google for register for CompTIA exam, it'll come up there. And what will happen is as you go through the, the process, it'll say, do you want to take this exam at home or do you want to take it at a testing center? And so that question basically routes you right into the online testing registration side of things. You pick your exam and then after you pick your exam, I believe it just goes directly to um, there's a calendar and then you pick whatever day you're looking at and, it, and it'll list from AM to PM in your time zone, all of the different um, all different options. I will say this, we have seen several points of frustration where when you register for an account, you might put your time zone in as let's say central time. A lot of folks who have moved the military that may be overseas, they don't change that time zone back. And so they end up scheduling a, a test for 11 AM instead of 11 PM or vice versa. Um, and so that's been an issue. So as you're registering, make sure, and I believe your time zone is on that registration link, on that registration calendar page, make sure your time zone's good. Um, and that'll that'll save you some hassle for sure. That's a really important pro tip that I would not have delved into had you not mentioned it. It, 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 it took us about a week and a half to figure out that. And it was like, oh, okay, well, and, and so we do have a lot of language around that now, but it's just, it, it, it's one of the things that's easy to, you just don't really think about, you know, everything kind of automated, but, but, when you set up an account, you do set your time zone up. So it is something you have to pay attention to. Awesome. I'm going to put up one more comment for those of you guys who are still commenting, or if you're watching this on a rebroadcast, keep the questions coming. We're happy to address them privately after the fact. So just because this is the last comment doesn't mean that you won't get support on the rest of them. So Maya Bowen asks, what's the protocol for a person who does not have an office with a door kind of like mine? Yeah, I mean that's that's probably the one thing that as we talk through the the the, the portions about that you know in the beginning that's that's hard. You do have to have an an environment that's quiet and contained. Um, and so if you if you don't have access to that, it's it, I don't mean to be dismissive, but you almost have to find one. Um, and if it's a real real pain to do that, I would 
I'd encourage you to look and see if there's testing centers available. Um, every testing center now has pretty strict health guidelines. I know some people are comfortable with it, some some are not, but um, that that is one of those things that's been tough because if if you imagine if it's if it's an, an open environment, the chance of someone walking by is much higher. Um, and in a lot of those cases, the proctors have to stop the exam if they see multiple people in a, in a location. That's part of our rules for it and something that I really can't move on. Um, but yeah, that that's, I, I would just, tr just try to find something that does work. I will also say, as you're setting that environment up, if you have any possible way at all to wire in, I would always recommend that. Um, if you can't, obviously having a strong Wi-Fi signal is really important, but bandwidth is your friend. We don't require a, a huge amount of bandwidth on it, but as you're finding that environment, um, make sure that connectivity is there. I wish I had a better answer for you on that, um, but I just don't. That's just one of those requirements that we really have to, to maintain. And all of these requirements are there because we want you to be successful and we want you to earn that exam and that certification and for it to mean the same as everyone else's certification, which is why yep. we're real sticklers for preventing any sort of interference with an exam. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, there's a number of different reasons for it. There's security and also just confidence and being distracted is, is definitely not good for sure, given the investment you're making in training and in, 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 in the certifications. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time that we have for today for questions. Certainly keep them coming. It gives us great ideas of future content that we can make to help support you guys. So thanks, Randy, very much for your time. Thanks for making this a priority. And thanks to everybody who tuned in today. Until the next time, stay safe. Be well, and remember that we're all in this together. Thanks, guys. Thanks.